Hello, everybody, and welcome to Virtual Bourbon. My name is Steve Akeley. We have a fun event tonight. We've got our Dusty Series back. Our buddy Wes Harden here is uh, with us, and we're going to be tasting some bakers tonight, aren't we, Wes? Yeah, absolutely. We've got uh, this could be one of the tougher ones, I think, to determine what's the Dusty and what's the more recent. I feel like it's one of the one of the offering. It's probably is uh, close to what they were doing uh, back in '90 versus what we're doing now. But we may be surprised. They may be totally different. And, that's uh, part of the fun of the event. We're going to talk about some history and see if we can uh, guess this thing right or not. Nice. Nice. I just went ahead and poured my A just so it's out there. I don't know if everybody else wants to do that. I've just yeah, got it sitting that. right now. And I'll tell you what, just opening up the bottle, the, the bouquet on the, that thing, it's just explosive out of the, even the sample bottle. Man, oh man, that's got a nose on it. Yep, Ooh. absolutely. Yep, I've got uh, I've got both of them poured. If anybody wants to do that, uh, okay. Steve, if you want, I can go ahead and jump into this thing. Uh, yeah, absolutely, man. All right, so what? Uh, got a lot of people here that are pretty frequent uh, visitors to the Dusty series. A couple new folks on, so I want to want to welcome everyone. Uh, what we want to do is uh, let's go ahead and pour the A, like Steve said. Let's go ahead and get some initial uh, nosing comments and opinions if you want to take a sip feel free to obviously it's your whiskey uh we'll get a little we'll get a couple of opinion points and then i'll jump in and start the history let you guys sip and enjoy and listen and then we'll stop and uh get in the sample two and then i'll finish up the history and then we'll do some discussion and questions and votes afterwards so anybody have any initial opinions on the nose on a mm -hmm. heavy vanilla heavy vanilla yeah heavy vanilla I'm also getting, I'm getting the vanilla, but I'm also getting kind of an orange and, and dough, like, like those orange rolls that, uh, oh, uh, yeah. my mom used to make back in the, I would think they were just the Pillsbury ones, but you know, back when I lived at home, she would make those. She I was definitely cooking. get that. I definitely get that orange zest for sure. Mm -hmm. Reminds yeah. me, my grandma used to make, uh, it was actually a sugar cookie. Uh -huh. But it had orange slice candies in it. So it kind of reminds me of like one of those old yeah. orange slice cookies. Yeah, that's cool. Mm. It's definitely got a nice spice punch and kick to it. It does. Sure. It does. Really long finish. It's still just creeping down the back palate, down the throat. Mm -hmm. Anybody yeah. else? What do you guys think? A little spice on the tongue. Very enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Fred? What are you getting off this one? I'm, I'm getting my tape. I forgot to get the tape off the bottle. So oh, I'm <laughs> that, that takes right a little here. while. They, they are. They come uh, nicely sealed for you. Yeah, for your protection. yeah. Yeah. I did that in advance, too. So, no, yeah, it's good. I try, to make, sure that, I try yeah. to make sure they don't leak in transit. So. Yeah. Tony, what about you? Uh, based on the nose, like I was, I agree with the vanilla, and I get that orange now that you mention it. Um, mm -hmm. But based on the nose, I don't want to sway anybody, but I think A is the dusty and B is the. Oh, we got an early vote then. <laughs> oh, early, early vote. vote. Oh. 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 Now, now I'll say this: he can do that, but we also allow him to change because we've seen people change, and sometimes yeah. it's even on the second pass. We we go through a second time, and, yeah. and also I, yeah. I haven't yep. tasted the second one, but based on the nose on both of them, he's right away. He's thinking it's the dusty. Okay, right. Yeah. I like it. I'll yeah. tell you what, let's uh, you guys keep nosing and sipping and enjoy that one. I'm going to jump into some of the history and then we'll come back and get a few more opinions of A as we pour and start on B. So obviously we're talking about uh, bakers uh, just for reference. I think it was in all the notes. The, uh, the bakers we have is uh, it's actually a 92. I think we had it wrong. It's a 92. It's a, it's a dusty. It's one of the first ones. Uh, that they introduced out there. Uh, it's a 107 proof at seven years old. That was always the what always the way it's been up until recently. Uh, it's part of it was part of the original small small batch collection. So Basil Hayden, Knob Creek, Booker, and Baker. So it was part of that uh, that whole collection that actually you know that small batch collection along with Blanton single barrel kind of changed 
started turning the tide of bourbon after he had been down for so many years. Single barrel expressions, small batches uh, kind of gave, uh, kind of started the premium category, even though today we know a lot of the whiskey made in the, the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, we consider those premium dusties now because A, you can't get them, and B, we know what we know now. Uh, but back then it was just bourbon was just bourbon it was just uh, oh. uh kind of a southern country folk gentleman drink and there was not a lot out there that was considered you know high end things that we covet now were just sitting on the shelf for pennies and dollars and people just grabbed them at will and drank them when they wanted to so uh, let's, uh, let's ask uh, a friend a question here because Fred yeah. has such a great history. Of course, he works at Buffalo Trace now. He's a tour guide there, but he was working in the liquor industry at a liquor store. Uh, and I assume going back to 92, you're, you're around when, when that small batch collection started coming out and that, what was the reaction to that Fred back in the day? Well, the stores I worked in, we didn't carry much bourbon back then. Uh -huh. This is a bar. Uh, when, when that first came out, but I, um, uh, I met Fred No at a liquor store in one of the suburbs of Philadelphia, and he had the small batch collection, and that's what really got me into bourbon. Mm -hmm. So I, I, it was a great reaction as far as I was concerned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, got Fred uh, here tonight. It's uh, get him on this journey, then he, let him hear. He, he's he's <laughs> here with us because of the small batch collection. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. I'm I'm here because of the bakers. That was one of my favorite. <laughs> that went, oh, well, good. That was a sleeper, right? The Bakers was a, yeah. a sleeper in that. And but, it's different now, but uh, yeah, it was definitely fl always flew into the river because it was always good. The higher proof was nice. Yeah, yeah that was good. When they first yeah, came out, that was my favorite, the Bakers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a yeah. there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of kind of uh, old school bourbon guys and people in the industry. That's one of those kind of sneaky mm -hmm. uh, bourbons that always come up on everyone's favorite list is Bakers, Bakers, Bakers. Yeah, and everyone knows it's good. You just don't expect it to, to come off of you know come out of a, of a list of what of your what were your favorites as you started drinking bourbon everyone always says makers and jim bean white label and wild turkey but there's a lot of people that uh that was uh, that was their favorite so up until around i guess it was 2020 it's always been part of the small batch uh so collection it's 107 proof seven years they changed it up in 20 they did a total remake so we went from a small batch to a single barrel expression. It's a minimum seven years, but like most all single barrels, they're different and they're aged slightly different. So most of the ones I've seen that I've had are seven years, eight months, seven years, 10 months. I think there's a couple of eight years floating around, but most of them are in the seven year X month uh, range. They're still at 107 proof uh, and they've got a really cool bottle with the cork you could probably put someone's eye out if you threw it at them <laughs> right eye. like right. those corks are they're almost like uh, notary stamps upside down like they're huge gigantic corks that are mm -hmm. so it's a the, the change came in 20 uh they again they went from a small batch to single barrel i personally think it was a pretty good move i think uh single barrel and and they now they have single barrel selections of those a very few of those that's kind of a nice move to, to go to the trend now. The big thing along with uh, barrel proof offerings are finished whiskeys and then single barrels. That's what everybody likes. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's Baker's. Baker's was uh, launched as 107 seven year uh, back in 92. It's been part of that collection and, and it remained the same all the way until 2020. Uh, what I want to do is I want to get more into some history of Baker Bean, which is which is who the, the whiskey is named after. Yeah, I've met Baker. Yeah, exactly. So that's, you know, the this is not a, this is a, a lot of times with these Dusties, we could fill a whole episode with just the history of the brand and where it changed hands and moved here and moved there and how it ended up and so forth. This has been a very consistent brand uh, it's still a dusty, even though it's uh, started in the 90s. Uh, you know, we're sitting here in 2022, so that's still uh, quite a few years ago. So it is technically a dusty, even though uh, everybody on here, maybe besides Tony, uh, was around in the 90s. But um, yeah, it's 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 kind of weird to, to for me. It's, it's weird to say a, a bottle from the 90s is considered a dusty, but it is. And so that's where we're going to look at it. But so there's not a lot of brand history. It really hasn't changed a lot outside of uh, the branding we talked about in 20. But there's a lot of history uh, around Baker, uh, the man who 
uh, is uh, the bourbon's named after. Uh, and there's a lot of history. He's a very intriguing character from a from a bourbon media standpoint. He's a very elusive character. Uh, he doesn't do a lot of interviews, podcasts. I don't think he's ever done a podcast. I don't think so either. No. Uh, there's a handful of interviews. Most of the interviews he's done have been more local to uh, Bardstown, uh, you know, Central Kentucky area. And most of the interviews he's done there has been for. Uh, like local radio people, uh, local news media, doing favors for friends, for lack of better terms. He he's uh, he doesn't do. Uh, he was never really. He, he did make business trips, and I've got a cool little uh, short excerpt and story I found, and, and that we'll go over a little later. He he didn't. He was not a Booker Fred No type of person in the company. Mm-hmm. They were out traveling the world and mm-hmm. kissing babies and shaking hands and going to ball games and going to rock concerts and doing that kind of stuff. He did some traveling, uh, but for the most part, he was one of those guys that just came in, wrote his sleeves up, uh, did his job. He, and he had a lot of uh, eclectic little hobbies and and things of that nature, uh, which we will get into in just a second. Uh, What I want to do is I want to bounce back to a, I want to get anyone else that has any more opinions. Uh, Has the whiskey opened up and brought you anything different? Uh, just any kind of last uh, comments on A before we switch over to B. Love the mouthfeel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. And and after drinking it, my lips tingle. Yeah. 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 Really nice. smooth. Really smooth. It's long finish. Yep. Yeah. It's, very nice. it's got yeah. a long finish for sure. Yeah. One of the things I've noticed, uh, and this happens quite a bit when, whether the whiskey's old, young, new, whatever, is it set in the glass of it. Mm-hmm. Caramel really stands out on the nose. Yeah. And it's, and it's starting to get some of that caramel burnt sugar to it as well. Mm-hmm. Which is, which is for me, I get that quite a bit out of uh, small batch, different small batch collections from Beam. I really get those out of a lot of the Knob Creek. Uh, a lot of Knob Creek to me is usually pretty heavy caramel, pretty heavy vanilla. I get bubble gum on the nose too, a little bit oh, of wow. a taste. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's really, really good on the nose and the Absolutely. taste. It's a yep. solid performer. Absolutely. Mr. Legend, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? I don't think I got anything else to add. Okay. Okay. Right. <clears throat> he's in a pressure cooker right now. He's got, <laughs> he's got a huge streak going on. It's hanging. His, now it's looming over his head. Yeah. Got yeah. his game face on. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, uh, before I jump into the rest of this history, let's, uh, if you have it, let's pour B and let's start, uh, start nosing and maybe sipping a little bit of B and get some initial reaction. And I'll jump in some of this Baker beam history. Very different. Almost yeah, uh, yeah, banana like, yeah. yeah. On the nose. Don't get that orange. No, Don't get no. the orange like on the yeah. and a caramel bread. I get a little bit of mint. I definitely get that. Uh, I get like a almost like a when you cut up a banana and put it in with like some citrus fruit and a fruit cocktail kind of thing. Uh huh. I don't get hardly any vanilla at all. Mm-hmm. In some ways it almost goes as like a rye with the mint for sure mm-hmm. interesting You know, what's odd is I get that bubble gum that Fred was talking about on A, I get it on B on the nose. Yeah. There's a peculiar uh, floral, almost perfumey, uh, faint uh, odor in there, too. Mm-hmm. Tell you what is common between the two for me is spice, heavy spice on the mid back palate, nice long Kentucky hug, nice mouthfeel. Yeah. The noses are pretty different, but the taste to me are fairly similar, which is interesting. 
All right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get into some of this Baker Beam history, and then we'll come back and reevaluate A and B, and then start taking a look at uh, what we think is going on. With Legend things. just texted me. He said he thinks his internet's going out. <laughs> <laughs> This is a tough one. This is a... <laughs> like, well, sorry, guys. I'll catch you on the next one. We got one next week, or, you know. Come on now. <laughs> All right. So Baker's was named after Baker Beam. Uh, pretty obvious there. He's the cousin of Booker, uh, and he was Booker's main distiller at Clermont, uh, while Booker was the master distiller. So big operation. They had distillers on every shift. They also had a main distiller as we talked about uh, up until some of his final years, but definitely while Booker was, uh, while uh, Baker was there, Booker did a lot of traveling and selling and promotional type things. So uh, Booker was, or Baker, and I'll make that mistake a hundred times. Baker was the main distiller at Claremont for Booker. Uh, interestingly <laughs> enough, he's the grand nephew of none other than Jim Bean, uh, who the company is named after. Uh, he's 85 years old, so he's uh, he's been around for a while. Uh, he started working at the Clermont plant uh, as a night watchman, and then they put him in the general labor pool. That's a pretty common theme, uh, at least back in the day. That seems to be a very common theme amongst uh, people that have been in the industry. For family a while. members, yeah. Family yeah. members and things like that. You know, they they're they're family members. They're part of the 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 legacy of the family and the company, but they're required to come in and pay their dues and roll up their sleeves. And uh, the whole idea, uh, at least maybe not so much nowadays, uh, but definitely back then to get to head distiller, lead distiller, or master distiller, uh, you're expected to have worked in all the departments, know all the jobs, truly be a master of the craft, not just the distilling part of it, but all of the input and all the output, including shipping and logistics and grain selection and so forth. So he uh, he uh, came in at uh, entry level and started up uh, working his way up, worked in most every department in the plant before ascending, ascending into distilling. Uh, he retired, on, ironically enough, he retired just before Baker's was introduced. So uh, a lot of people probably assumed that he was the one that named this release and you know, he named it after himself. It's not the case at all. It's uh, it actually was uh, he was already retired when they uh, released Baker's. Uh, he worked with the distillery around 38 years, so it's a pretty long, uh, pretty pretty good long career. Uh, he had a brother, Carl. He had a nickname, Shucks. Carl Shucks Beam. Uh, he worked with him, but he was the night shift distiller, while Baker was uh, the day shift master distiller. So he had a couple of uh, brothers there uh, working in Claremont, both working under Booker. So tons of uh, tons of beam influence all over Jim Beam Company, like you would think it would be. A uh, couple of odd things about, not odd, but just kind of different. He was very fond of trucks, and uh, he he actually was known to jump in the grain trucks and ride in the grain trucks over to Indiana to pick up <laughs> loads of corn and come back it, to the point where he actually not so much hijacked because you know they let him do what he wants to but he actually drove the route a handful of times uh just because he wanted to i think there was a couple times where the truck driver was out and he uh he would just jump in the grain truck run up to, to indiana pick <laughs> up the grain and drive it on back uh which is pretty cool he loved trucks so much he actually, uh, they had a barrel truck on site, and I don't know if that truck is still there or not, uh, but there was a barrel truck there that actually had his name on the side of the door, stenciled in, Baker Beam on both the front, uh, the passenger and the driver's door. So he's a very big, uh, kind of old-timey, big uh, work truck guy. Uh, he, was a, he was a motorcyclist, too. Uh, and in some degree, he was kind of because he wasn't so much in the limelight and kind of shunned, you know, public appearances and media. He was kind of considered, I think, by some kind of the rebel of the family. You know, he's the motorcycle guy. He's the kind of a little bit of uh, when he was younger, you know, he's, he's kind of the, the guy sneaking around and doing things. Uh, it was interesting. The, one of the motorcycles he had in the 70s, which this seems strange to me, but maybe it's not. He had a motorcycle in the 70s that actually had a black and white TV on it. 
<laughs> so if you think about that, like for, the, for, for those of us that were kids, infants or teens or, or something or, or middle aged or whatever back in the 70s, you remember the TVs you had at your home, <laughs> rabbit ears, small TVs, the, the idea that they were actually motorcycles with TVs on them. It just blew my mind when I saw that. So, yeah, he had a, he had a 70s uh, motorcycle with a black and white TV on it. So that was uh, pretty, pretty strange. Uh, his father, Earl Bean, worked at the distillery as well. Uh, and early in his career, Baker was his assistant. So not only did he end up working for Booker, and obviously Booker was a, a huge mentor to him. His original mentor was Earl, his father. Uh, who he worked for as his direct assistant uh, early in his his days. Uh, he's also a huge cat rescuer and a huge uh, cat lover himself, which is a little bit strange when you think of like motorcycle, big truck guys. You know, you think they've got you know a bunch of dogs, and, you know, big bunch farm of dogs, Rottweilers or something, Rottweilers yeah. or big farm dogs or labs or whatever. No, he's a cat guy. He's a, he's a cat guy. He's big into cat rescue. Uh, he's, he's big. He's been big into charity uh, for local humane societies, and cat rescue places and things like that. So uh, he's a truck loving motorcycle riding cat lover is basically how you can describe him. Uh, we talked about he really didn't do a lot of traveling and media and so forth, but he, he did uh, in one of his interviews, he did kind of uh, tell a story uh, back in 62. So this was uh, quite a quite a ways back. Uh, he went with Booker on a trip to New York City. It was the first time he'd ever been on a commercial airplane. Uh, and the two were there to represent Bean to the New York Society of Security Analysts, which, is ba which was basically the group that decided if your company was going to be allowed on the New York Stock Exchange, right? So they were there to uh, to pitch the the company's finances, pitch the company to these guys. And wouldn't you wish you're fly on the wall for that meeting? Oh, I know, right? God, Booker, and, uh, Booker presents it. <laughs> Baker. Yes. And he, he says, he says, Booker and I had no idea what we were supposed to be doing. <laughs> and we, he, said, he said, we stayed in a fancy hotel. <laughs> we got to meet the vice president of the beam company. Uh, the son-in-law of Harry Blue, who was a huge Chicago businessman who, first, who was the first guy to really finance Beam. He said they took us to a Broadway play, which you can imagine that. Him right. sitting there. Uh, and he said he'd never seen anything like it before. We went to eat first. I've never been to a place fancier. And then he says we were even taken by we were even taken by a limousine. He said Booker and I went on that trip, and somehow. Beam got on the stock exchange anyway. So that was his, like, <laughs> that was one of his big business trips, evidently, was going to New York City and he and Booker, of all people, pitching uh, why Beam should be allowed on the New York stock exchange. But, and as we know, they were successful and, and Beam was on uh, the New York stock exchange. But that's uh, kind of a cool little miniature interview excerpt I, I saw because he's. He's uh, he's not a big media guy and didn't do a lot of traveling, but when he did, he was uh, seemed like he was a bit of a fish out of the water, which I thought was funny. Yeah. So uh, obviously he's been retired for quite a while, um, and he's uh, kind of known to just uh, he lives in the house there, um, there on the property, uh, and just kind of sits out there and drinks his bourbon, hangs out with his cat and listens to the sounds of bourbon being made at the distillery every day. And that's, uh, that's how he's, uh, enjoying yeah. his retirement life. So he would be a really, I know Steve's been working on it. Probably oh, I'd love day to one. talk to him. I'm trying. Uh, but he's yeah. just a, he's just the guy that just doesn't get those uh, interviews, but I can imagine he would be a all time classic if someone was able to do that. An another dream thing, you know, you, you have your bucket list of things you want to do if you're a bourbon fan. And then sometimes you get those fulfilled and then there's always new things, but one of them that's been on there for Forever is, you know, he is also kind of the de facto, uh, you know, head of the family at this point, uh, if you will, because he's he's the you know the the oldest uh, uh, that and is the ties to the history to Booker and all the people before him, and uh, and of course he's been uh, you know he's curated this amazing collection and and really when the Beam the company wasn't even doing that he was out there buying all these things and and put them and he's almost curated like a museum at his house, 
And I understand uh, talking to Beth Burroughs, who works for Jim Beam. We tried to get her on this event, but she had a, she was booked for something else for Beam tonight. But she she says that uh, of course it's not set up like a museum, like you can listen to headphones and hear the, the collection described. But he will run through you, the whole thing with you. And by the way, wow, there's a huge collection, and uh, and if you run out of time. He puts like a, a little uh, sticky note on there and says, okay, Wes Harden uh, was here on uh, on January 6th, uh, 2022, and stopped here. And then next time, Wes, you come by, you pick it up there, and then you move forward to the rest of the collection. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, that would be cool. <laughs> that would be cool. We, we got to get signed up for that. Somehow. Yes, exactly. That's, that's something we got to do, Wes. We got to go yeah, there. We can do it. I'm there. Yeah. Heck yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, kind of a, a quick history of Baker. You know, it's... Uh, it's, he's one of those mysterious people, and because he wasn't in the limelight, there's a lot known about him, but most of what's known about him is probably personal stories from people, family, you know, interviews, family discussions, things of that nature. He didn't really put himself out there a whole lot outside of his love for cats, motorcycles, obviously <clears throat> bourbon and, and distilling, but he's just, uh, he's an example of a, a guy who really didn't leverage his family name. He didn't use it for monetary advances he he no. he just he was part of a family he enjoyed uh distilling and working in the distillery and just going in and you know shooting the crap with the guys and sitting on the porch and just kind of living uh, uh a busy but slower life if you know what i mean and that's uh, that's what made him happy and to his credit he didn't give in to you know he didn't give in to all of the the fame and fortune and glamour of the beam name he's just uh, kind of that guy behind the scenes that came in and did his job and went home yeah yeah and also uh, another thing too and, and why ultimately booker was the one who made the call on that that brand being named after baker and and he did that as a tribute to baker and and baker was just kind of his right hand man throughout the whole time and one of the things too that baker did that really helped out booker was booker didn't like dealing with the management all the the suits that would come in from chicago and things like that so that's why specifically baker was in charge uh during the day at the uh at the claremont plant which would be the one that you would go to when you come into town and uh, uh, Booker stayed, which is not the Booker No plant, but the Boston plant. Yep. Uh, you know, he'd stay there a little bit more remote, and uh, so so most of it would come in and go there, and Baker would handle all that. So so Booker didn't have to deal with that because he he didn't have a whole lot of time to answer to a bunch of number crunchers and things like that. So uh, that was another key thing that Baker did too was just deal with the minutia of working for a corporate organization. So, yeah, it's it's interesting that you know Booker and the team there selected the one hundred and seven proof the seven years uh, for that to, and, and that mash bill to be the release for Baker's and uh, Booker had stated that all the years that, that Baker was there and all the whiskey they tasted. And of course they're tasting in barrel strength and they're taking it all the way down to 80 up and down to find where they want to be, depending on what the release and the, and the product is. And uh, evidently that specific 107 proof, was a proof that, that Baker was fond of. He thought that was the, the sweet spot of having enough punch to it, but not being crazy barrel proof and things of that nature. And and like most of kind of the old guard, six to eight years was that that's back then nobody really let their you know the whiskey age much longer than eight years because they grew up in a in a in a manner of bourbon was hot and and it was just their, their ancestors had released it four to six years, four to eight years, because you couldn't sit on it. It's like today, you, they can't sit on a lot of age stock because the demand's too high. And up yeah. until the, the late sixties, really the seventies and eighties, up until the seventies and eighties, that was true back then. So you know, a seven year 107 was kind of a shock to the market. That was the time where they had just come out of everything was watered down to 80 proof and 86 proof and, maybe some bottled and bonds here or there, but there sure as hell wasn't any barrel proof running around or right. anything above a uh, hundred proof outside of wild Turkey one Oh one. And old granddad and old granddad 114. And then uh, some stuff that like uh, KBD bought old stock weird stuff. Yeah. Oh, weird they, stuff. Where they, yeah, yeah. You know, no, nothing. Yeah. The one offs where they made, uh, St. Nick and, you know, they bought yeah. them, you know, these, all, all these weird items outside of that. Um, you know, it was kind of a, a game changer, you know, in that group, you know, Knob Creek was everywhere from hundred to 120 and, and all over the place. And then we know 
Booker's is, is definitely unfiltered barrel proof. And uh, what was odd about that small batch collection is you kind of had those heavy hitters that were anywhere from 100 proof to hell up to 130 something with the Booker's. And then you had Basil had Basil right. had there at 80 proof. It was just kind of like the, the little redhead stepchild. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. uh it's a it's a really good uh, I think Baker's is a, a kind of a hidden shelf drinker gem that's still out there today. Uh, it's been very consistent. I think you know we obviously will make some decisions here in a minute on what we think between these two specific offerings. But uh, all in all, it's a a really good tribute, good product uh, to a guy who uh, was just a humble uh, guy, went into work every day and lived his life, and really didn't get into all of the uh, the, the glitz and glamour of the bourbon boom and the family name and all those things. I met uh, Baker at the at Fred's uh, Bourbon Cues during the Bourbon Festival, and he was really quiet, laid back guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's uh, that. That's just uh, that's he's almost the anti Booker if you think yeah. about it. Almost yeah. they were they. Like I, I've never met either one, obviously, but everything you read and all the stories you hear, they're like polar opposites to some degree. I, I met him one time as well. I went to when uh, uh, the last when they did the public thing. That's when Freddie Johnson went in and Matt Chitak went in to the Kentucky Bourbon Hall of Fame, and I forget who the other, oh Max Shapiro got the lifetime achievement. I went to that one. That was and, the day it was uh, 145 degrees outside, wasn't of it? Of course, yes, yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I when 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 uh, Baker came in, you know, these are all Barber fans. Everybody's talking. It's a whole room, and he doesn't come in like right at the first thing. He comes in right before it's ready to get started. I'm telling you, all eyes suddenly shift to Baker Bean. I mean, he's that big of a deal. Uh, again, very humble and quiet guy. I did get an opportunity to meet him, shake his hand, uh, you know, uh, tell him I'd love to talk to him sometime, and. Uh, we still haven't done that, but Good luck, uh, sir. yeah, yeah. But it was fun. It was fun seeing how the whole room, that, you know, just changed when he walked in. I mean, definitely, he's one of those people that has an aura about him, uh, you know, at this point. So cool stuff. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, years down the road, when you know people are always going to write new bourbon books and new bourbon history books, and as years go on, there's more people added to those lists. You know, as time goes on, it, it's going to be interesting. 15 or 20 years, which you know, he, at 85, he would be gone by then. It's interesting to see because he wasn't out of the spotlight. It's interesting to see how bourbon history books are going to, uh, what they're going to write about him, where they're going to put him kind of on the, the pedestal compared to some of the, the other big names. And I hope he gets the, he gets the recognition and do that he deserves. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Uh, so what does everyone think about B? I know we had a little bit of comments earlier. What do we think about that one? Any other tasting or nosing notes? This has the taste of a, an older bourbon, you know, a, a bourbon from way back. Mm hmm. Interesting. Mm hmm. We haven't voted yet. We're not voting yet. No. The only two people so far. And we don't want any, we don't want any more guesses yet. We're going to go through the guests. But so far, <laughs> after we've sampled uh, both, we have two early votes on opposite ends. So that's yes. yeah. going to make so it for a good voting. Explode. here. Yeah, it's like when you watch Survivor, they show you like one of each uh, person. So, yeah. How many times do you think they have to edit to get that just? Oh, yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, that's a big part of it. And, and we'll ask two questions, too, when we do this. We'll ask, which Absolutely. one do you think is the Dusty and which one do you like better? It could be both the same, but it doesn't have to be. So that's uh, be thinking about that as you're tasting through these again. Yep. So if you uh, if you guys want, uh, if you want to take another pass at A and B, just uh kind of reset your cells and get your cells ready for some uh, for some questioning. We're going to start voting here in just a minute. Mm, mm, mm. Anybody have any questions? If you're not comfortable with uh, coming out and audio, there's a chat box that you can pop some questions in if you want to. Or if you want to make fun of the legend and, or something. Just <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's hedged as bad as he does. What year did you say that uh, they started doing uh, Bakers? 92 is when that small batch collection came out. I have one. I have a bottle from 2014. Oh, nice. There you go. There you go. I just yeah, bought the, it a couple of years ago. At yeah, the, 
the yeah the recent one uh we're doing is a 2019 just for reference yeah it uh it seems like um they were hanging out for a long time the the uh old style bottles and stuff like that but now i don't really see them anymore i, I think they're kind of gone for the most part I, I mean i saw three in a in a case in a liquor store here locally the other day and i got excited i was like that's perfect i'll grab all three of them right right because they, they've probably been there for a while. They had a little bit of dust on them. So I'm thinking they're anywhere from three to six years old. And they, they, that, that place is fairly reasonable. Like they're not, you know, they're not the place that has Blanton's for $300 kind of place, right. but they're not the place that has Blanton's for retail. They're, you know, a Blanton's bottle is a hundred bucks, give or take that place if they have it. So I walked up and I was expecting, all right, this is going to be 55, 60 bucks a piece. Right. I'll grab a couple and get on the flight. Nope, they had them at 110 bucks. So I think Ooh. what happened is probably with the the probably with the change of the bottle, they decided to put a premium tag on there for you know in case anybody came in and was looking for the last of the yeah. Uh, of the, I let I let them sit there. I didn't need them that bad. No, no, I think that was they'll, a good. They'll call. be there six months from now to offer them something less. And I'll give them one exactly. All right, we want to start voting. Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right, let me start with, let's start with uh, Mr. Tony Frun. Well, Tony, again, your assignment is which do you think is the dusty, either A or B, and which one did you like better, A or B? Again, no wrong answer here. Well, there'll be a wrong answer on the dusty at some point, but right now there's no, uh -huh. there's no wrong answer for sure on which is your favorite, because that's just your favorite. We can't tell you that's wrong. Yeah, so um, picking my favorite, that's, that's pretty hard. I'm going to save that to second i'm i'm gonna guess um i'm not a betting man necessarily but a has a quality that i have not um, tasted much and i'm not familiar with many dusties and it seemed like it taste take uh took a while to open up so even though i'm not a betting man i would put money on a that that okay. is dust wow okay um B was a lot more cleaner in the smell and the taste. Um, and I'm actually a big fan of the uh, single barrel um, bakers. I think it's a really good pickup if you can find it. Um, picking my favorite. I mean, it's a toss up. Um, you know, it, it depends, you know, for this, for this chance or at this point, uh, I'm just gonna say A. My a. Okay. E and A. A and A. All right. Right. All right. Let's go over to Mr. Bob Whitlatch. Heck, I always have to go before Rick Brenner. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I like A the best, and uh, given that it has a a uh, fuller, rounder flavor. I'm guessing that's the dusty too. Okay. All right. Another double A there. Okay. All right. Let's go for Eric Johnson. Okay. I prefer the A. That's my favorite. Okay. I believe the dusty is the B. All right. Okay. I like it. All right. Uh, let's go with. Mike Gascom. I'm going to follow that up too. I think uh, A is preferred, but I'm picking up a little old wood on B as it's set there a little longer. So I'm thinking, uh, thinking B is a dusty. All right. I like it. Mixing it up a little bit. Got to give so We got to give Rick a moment of pause and at least. Right. We gotta, yeah. We got to make him sweat. Just a little bit, right? <laughs> All right, let's go, uh, Fred. Let's go to you, sir. I like A best, and I'm gonna have to go with B also for the dusty oh. because, like I said, it has that older taste to it. All right. Uh, Mr. Bill. I think that uh, A is the dusty and. Uh, I think I like A better. So, Steve, where, where are we at right now? I know we're a sweep for preference. <laughs> we're 6-0 we're, we're and 0 and liking A better. 
Okay. But we're split even right down the center now for uh, Dusty uh, A and B. Okay. Three and three. All right. Three Let's three. keep going. Let's go to Mike. Mike. Yeah, I think uh, I'm going to go double A. Um, double I a. like it better, and I think it is the Dusty. All right. Double A it is. Steve, I think you're next, my friend. Uh, I'm going to agree uh, with Mike right in front of me there. I'm going to go double A. Double A. All right. And then last but not least, the undefeated champion of the Dusty Series. Our our Everyone listens own, now. Yeah. Yeah. He's the Rick. He's the Rick Flair of the ABB <laughs> Network Dusty Series. The Oracle Rick. speaks. Yep. Rick, yeah, the Oracle speaks. Rick Brenner. <laughs> Rick Brenner, it's up to you, sir. Okay, I'm gonna go double A. Double, double A. A. Okay, that means our official uh on the liking it. Uh Wes, we'll ask you which one you like better. Uh th that's fair. Uh, it doesn't spoil. Like anything, A though. better. Right. So so A was a clean sweep. Got all 10 votes for uh, liking it better. On the Dusty side, Wes did not get a vote because he knows, but uh, uh, on uh, A, finished six to three, <coughs> six to three. So you picked out the perfect first six because you had a nice even split of, uh, of the votes for the first six. Very then, dramatic. Uh, yeah. This is hard though. But then the rest of them. Okay. Yeah, so I, uh, as we were voting, I was sitting here thinking that I may have accidentally <laughs> giving it, giving it, a, giving it away earlier when we were sampling the two, if anybody was paying attention. But clearly, the group was not paying attention because the dusty is B. Whoa! Really? Whoa! Down goes <laughs> Frasia. Down yeah. goes Frasia. So, so the, the one that when, when I was when I was tasting yeah. them earlier on A, I had stated that <laughs> that when I went back the second time, I was getting that heavy caramel vanilla brown sugar and i made the comment i get that a lot on knob creek and then as soon as i said it i was like shit i said this because i knew it was i knew it was the the more recent even though it's not oh, creek the yeah. point is so i, I kind of gave yeah. it away accidentally there so sorry about yeah. that congratulations to eric mike g and fred they yeah, got it right they got it right they have they're the, they have the longest streak score right now uh <laughs> <laughs> A, this is like this is like Jeopardy. Rick gets to go to the tournament of champions. Yeah. Uh, so what are the dates on on these two? Two thousand uh, ninety two and two thousand nineteen. Man, man, oh man. What I, what I do like about those uh, what the, the noses were different. Yeah. Uh, the guys yeah. that pick the guys that picked up on the picked up. To me, there's a reason, including myself. I love Dusty's. But not every time is a dusty better than what people are making today. Yeah, a lot of times they are. I mean, it's hard to it's hard to beat Oak Road Chessman. It's hard to beat Stitzel Weller. It's hard to beat you know some of the the, the old age and some of the dusty turkeys. However, we we've shown on here a handful of times now where uh, from a like versus not like the more recent destroys the dusty. Early times was one. It was a it was a total sweep, I believe. Right. Yeah. And, uh, this one was a total sweep of of the current one, and the, and I think I can't remember who it was, and I apologize, but someone picked up. I think it was Mike picked up. The the B had a little bit of that. He called it like some of that wood kind of yeah. bled into it. To me, it was a little bit of that dusty funk that kind of probably tipped you guys off a little bit. Yeah, and see, that's what I picked up on on yeah. A it was a little musty smell, but. We're going to blame it on your illness. We're going to put a little yeah, ash. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, this one's just got a little bit of that. Got a little bit of that cedar chest kind of hanging out in the background. And yeah, I didn't just, get it at first. It was, it's taken a while for it to come to the top. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. To me, it was, um, to me, <clears throat> A had that typical current uh, Jim Beam. You know, it was, it was very like, uh, most all even even some of the some of the single barrels are obviously one-offs where i've had knob creek single barrels that are cherry bombs or whatever the case is but anything that they blend uh, for the most part comes to me at uh, with a really heavy vanilla caramel nose for the most part you know some of that's probably yeast i'm guessing a lot of that's uh, uh probably fermentation and some other things but at the end of the day you know, we all know that most anything that Brown Foreman does at some point has that banana nose to it. I mean, it's everything from Jack Daniels to 
Old Forester to uh, Woodford, you know, they all use that same yeast strain and, and it comes off to a lot of people as that heavy banana, a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of dickle for, uh, for whatever reason has that, that famous Flintstone vitamin kind mm -hmm. of chalky uh, thing to it. And the only thing that I can figure is, well, we know with brown form of the cheese, we know, I mean, they've basically said that. Right. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, to me, a lot of Buffalo Trace products, no matter what mash bill it is, I have a lot of Buffalo Trace products to me have a very fruit, cherry, uh, stone fruit forward flavor profile, you know, between, even between weeded and, and non-weeded, I still, uh, that's one of the most predominant uh, flavors I get out of Buffalo Trace is, to me, it comes off this cherry, but it's cherry, raspberry, plum, uh, you know, that dark fruit kind of nose. So there's something uh, to be said for yeast. And uh, I think most uh, every distillery kind of has their signature uh, single note that people tend, after they drink it over and over, they tend to can pick it out and, and line up pretty well. With, I think, probably, probably Brown Foreman's banana probably is the most prominent one, at least to me it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've had some, I've had some single barrel Jack Daniels uh, that are really good, but man, they're like literally the nose is like a banana runt. So those little banana shaped runts you used to get in the candy thing. It's just really banana forward. But uh, yeah, it's uh that was a good, uh, I thought this was going to be a close one. I figured it would be close to 50, 50, at least. I don't think, I didn't think it would be a runaway with, um, I had a feeling it'd be a runaway with taste, not guessing which was the dust. Right. Yeah. I think a lot of, I think a lot of time people get it in their heads that, and I've done this before myself. One of these is the dusty and dusties are supposed to be really good. And I like this one best. So it's gotta be the dusty. You know, like I, I've, I've fallen into that trap of many a times myself only to be tricked. And I, even sometimes it's absolutely true. Wes, I usually go off the nose. Yeah, me too. Right. Without tasting them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, for me, uh, a it kind of had a, on the nose uh, a little bit of cork. I, at least that's what I thought. But, but I also think this was they were really hard. To, they were really close. Yeah, they were they were really close the, to yeah. me. The the taste and the finish were almost identical to me. It was a lot of spice, uh, a long finish. Uh, a nice Kentucky hug. If you had to, if I didn't know what it was and I had to guess it, I would have guessed it around 105 to 110 proof. If I had to guess, the nose was the single, uh, you know, it, 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 the, the the palate trip. Your your nose, the front, the mid, the back, and the finish. The the nose was the one that totally separated the two. Everything else after the nose to me was fairly consistent between the two. Well, we'll have to uh, get the uh, review, the legends uh, note from his doctor. Uh, we'll send that to the board for review and uh, yeah. see if if they rule in favor of his streak continuing. Hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, 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 Rick, you can you can go on to the ABV Network Crew Club page, Facebook page. <laughs> you want to? That's that's the forum to file a uh, a complaint to the commissioner, Tim Swyatt. <laughs> Tim Swyatt. So you can yes. fi you can fi you can file the complaint to Swyatt and then. Uh, Council will meet with him and we'll figure out what. what if, I, if I was really worried about that, was I would have sat this one out. <laughs> <laughs> it's all fun. No, it's it's fun. a good. It's a good streak to have, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's fun. So, man, I think you should file a grievance, Craig. Yeah. <laughs> well, now we have uh, we have a three way champion now. That, uh, We'll have to yeah. see if they can keep a streak like Rick. Well, uh, Eric uh, flashed up two. So uh, you, you, the last one you were on, Eric, you got it right. So he's, uh, oh, yeah. he's so he may be, two. He may be the champion right now. Yeah, I think uh, I'm the reigning champ with two. You are there, the right? He's the two-time, two-time reigning champ. Fred, you know, yeah. do you know what your streak is? We, we are to start keeping one. track. Uh, uh, I can't one. remember the last. I, I think I got the last Dusty right. Too, yeah, I think. The, I think Fred was on the Stitzel Weller last yeah. year. Oh, yeah. He did yeah. The, oh. uh, the Cabin Steel. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Fred's a two as well. So two yeah. so far. Uh, uh, Mike G, have you? I got the old granddad got me. But oh, that's so, right. so your streaks are one. So there you yeah, go. Yeah, I was I was undefeated until old granddad, and then yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Of course, I kept going. I say, if you it. skip an event, you get you get charged with a loss. There, I mean, I mean <laughs> this isn't sold out, so uh, I think anybody who had a streak, the streak stops, and they have to start over too. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, so it just have to do, to do uh, more of the dusties. Yeah. yeah. What's a uh, well, shameless plug? What's next, Wes? All right, so uh, well, I'll just go ahead and let everybody know what's next. The uh, the next two are sold out. Uh, mm. So next Monday. We are doing uh, our charity event for the tornado victims in Western Kentucky. Yes. Uh, so that's uh, that's a big event Monday. Freddie Johnson's going to be on. He, I have he a is. lady screaming at me, sending me multiple emails in all caps. Oh, I guess I shouldn't say this while we're recording. Uh, never mind. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Oh, we'll talk after we get the recording. <laughs> so, needless to say, it was a popular event. Uh, mainly, yes. I think yes. it's 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 popular for two reasons. One, I think uh, the charitable nature of a uh, the members of the ABB Network Club and B just the bourbon community as a whole wanted to help out. And then when you add uh, Freddie Johnson being on, just to to hear him. My goal, and I got to talk and to Steve. And a popular off. brand too. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I got, I, I got, to, yeah, I got to, I got to talk to Steve offline. I mean, I'm going to do some. There's no way I'm going to tell Freddie Johnson what the history of Blanton's and everything is. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to, I'm going to do a little School cliff West. notes. No, I'm, I'm going to do a little cliff notes and just let him jump right in and let him take over from there. It's going to be a, it's going to be an easy night for this guy. But uh, between Freddie and then knowing that Buffalo Trace was generous enough to to match uh, the donations. Yes. Yeah, that's the cool uh, thing. The the entries from from everyone uh, made it a no brainer. So I'm I'm super excited about Monday just because of what it represents. But yeah, Monday is our dusty. Uh, we're doing a current Blanton's '93 proof against a dusty export Blanton's Black, which by the way is an '80 proof. So we're gonna put the test. Uh, a lot of those a lot of those old '80 proof dusties. Don't drink like an 80 proofer. It's hard to tell them from right. 85, 90, 95 proof. So that one's going to be interesting from a tasting standpoint. And then just to hear Freddie do his thing, then that's over the top. After that one, uh, later in the month, we have a, another sold out event. I'm super excited. I've been trying to find this one. I think there's quite a few people on tonight that are on this one. Uh, it's a Dusty Makers. So Makers is the, their claim to fame is we've never changed. We're as consistent as we can be. We're not changing for anybody. Uh, we're putting them to the test. And mm -hmm. we're going to test uh, a current Makers with the Makers from, I think it's the late 80s. Mid to, mid, mid to late 80s, I believe. I yep. can't remember. But, uh, so we got that one coming up at the end of the month. The first week, uh, depending on how the calendar sets, I think February the 7th, this one still has spots available. Unless, yes yeah we've still got okay. we still got about eight tickets left so this yeah, is a so good got, one to get into yeah, yeah this would be a good one so the the third one on the list which would be february 7th i believe we're uh gonna do a current yellowstone with a dusty yellowstone there was a decanter i found <laughs> uh of a, of a yellowstone which aren't a lot of those running around that i've seen i mean there's probably some yeah. old decanters but as far as one being full with clear whiskey uh, so I'm excited about that one. Super excited. And that Steve decanter Bean. celebrates their, their 100th year. Yep. And it's this year, that, it's, it's 50 years old. It's 50 years old. So now they're celebrating their 150th year. And yeah, I'm uh, going to I'm gonna run that empty decanter down to Steve and give it to him so they can put it up in the gift shop. That's cool. Display it somewhere, somewhere. So Steve uh, is going to be on as the representative. And what's cool, like when we have Jane Bowie on or we have Freddie on or this next time we've got uh, when we've got uh, Steve Beam on, they actually play along, too. They have to they have to play What's the Dusty with us. So they don't know either. So they got to do it blind, which is. Tr and trust me, cool it's thing. very nerve wracking to try to go through the history of a, of a brand <laughs> right. or a distillery when the, the when the owners or the key players or whoever are sitting there and it's like you feel like you're at the, at the front of a class and a teacher is just <laughs> checking well, every one of your answers well, in public. Well, uh, Wes got caught in, uh, he did one of these with Freddie No was supposed <laughs> to be the special guest. So Freddie No, the eighth generation distiller, son of Fred No, was supposed to be on. And when Freddie showed up, he brought his dad with him. So Wes had to do <laughs> beam history in front of Fred and Freddie No. <laughs> Good time. And by the way, they did the guest of Dusty, they both got it right, which is cool. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's fun. It, it allows them to join in and kind of, and we're putting them to the test a bit as well to see do they uh, do they know and recognize their, their current product they're product, making yeah, versus yeah. something that they may they personally may or may not have had a hand in uh, back in the day. So the dusty we did for 
uh, uh, for Beam, you know, Fred had a hand in that. I mean, he was obviously distilling and working for the company back then. Freddie did not, but both of them were able to pick up. That one was a pretty clear cut, yeah. which one was dusty and which one wasn't. I think that the makers, this was, I knew this was going to be a tough one. I'm guessing the makers is probably going to be the toughest. And if not, uh, Jane, Jane and makers may file a lawsuit and make us burn the tape forever. If, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like is... they come on, they don't really have anything to win here, right? I mean, they, no, you know, they... so, so they, I don't know why they do it, but it's fun. I, we love having the, here, the bourbon here's celebrities the, join. Here's us. the caveat of the makers. This is why this is why I love these things. And this, there's always some little, just when you think the playing field is level, there's always this one piece of information on one side or the other. The thing that's to keep in mind that maybe the the, the difference is the make the dusty makers would have been from a time where they were creating much uh, a lot less volume per day and it was more like their stuff has always been about quality but when you're making a lot less you pay more attention to it like it changes the process a bit so uh, I'm interested to see if any of, of of less versus mass production has anything uh, comes into play with that makers but yeah. those are the ones out there now those are the next three yellowstone still has the eight tickets left steve doesn't know this yet uh i have a i think it's a it's either 60s or 70s for sure it's one of the two i've got uh, uh i've been wanting to do one uh i've been wanting to do one for the glenmore distillery in owensboro uh if anybody has ever had any of the old 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s Glenmore products out of Owensboro. It's a, it's an extremely underrated dusty whiskey. Like it's some of my favorite actually. I've got a Kentucky Tavern Captain's Ship bottle. Oh yeah. And it's it's the one that's got. If you think the birthday bourbon has a short, wide base, this thing is twice the size of that. And it was literally designed for for people to have whiskey on boats. So when the boat rocked back and forth. It had the leverage in the base yeah. where it wouldn't slip and fall off. So, oh, thank you, Mike. Yeah, nice. Oh, absolutely. He's going, <laughs> he's going for the record. He's he's, he's coming at he's coming after you guys. <laughs> he's coming after Eric. He's put it out there. That's yeah. right. I'm, I'm taking over the street. It's yeah. like, <laughs> You'll be the so, king. <laughs> yeah. So more than likely, the the next one after Yellowstone will be sometime, depending on schedules, end of February, first of March. It's probably going to be a Kentucky Tavern in that captain's. Uh, bottle. Yes. So for you guys, you don't care what bottle it comes out of. The most important part of it is it's a historic distillery that we haven't gone through the history of yet here. It should be fantastic whiskey. Uh, so I'm excited about that. So the next one that hasn't been published is probably going to be that Kentucky Tavern uh, from Glenmore. And then I'm always on the hunt for cool and interesting things. Uh, the other thing Steve and I've talked about, you know, there's a lot of people that have been with us since day one. We appreciate you guys and as we've uh, gained some interest in following and the crew's gotten bigger. We've added people on. Some of the more popular ones that we've done, they either sold out before someone could get a ticket or simply they, they weren't in the club at the time. Uh, later this year, we may inter reintroduce some of those. So we'll, I'm probably going to try to do another Stitzel Weller. That's always a popular oh, one. Oh, yeah. You a can't go wrong with that. Can't Even go if wrong you've done those. it before, you want to go with the Stitzel Weller. Exactly. So I'll, there, there'll be some of the real popular ones, assuming I can get <laughs> bottles and so forth. Uh, that uh, I think would warrant another round through for and give people a chance uh, to go through that. If uh, if we if I find another dusty makers bottle, uh, we may do another makers at the end of the year, whatever. But the good news is there's no shortage of any of that stuff. There you go. So, so Wes was talking about this. I, I actually had one of these. Uh, it's gone. Now. Oh wow! It's gone now. Uh, drank it, enjoyed it, but. Uh, there's what he's That's talking the about. One. Wow. That's the bottle. Wow. It's like a birthday yeah. bourbon on steroids. Yeah. 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 That's cool. Yeah. I'll, I'll, give, me, give me one second. I'll show you my bottle. I'll never throw this away. Uh, I'm keeping this this forever. It's so cool. But uh, yeah. It's you old, know, uh, you know old we were talking about. What's that, Bill? We were talking about the baker uh, while he was away. We were talking about the bakers, and uh, uh, I looked up my. Uh, batch number, and uh, I actually like the, the the ones that we tasted tonight over the one that I had. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So here is the oh, here's yeah. one that's full. Look at that! Look at that's that. That's cool. It's eight year, 
I think it's 90 proof. It's going to have a decent proof point to it. Eight years, Glenmore Distillery. It's going to be a it's going to be a good one. So that's probably uh, next on the horizon. I got to work out with Steve with dates and, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's what's coming up. There's still looks like seven spots now on Yellowstone. We'll have this Kentucky Tavern from Glenmore, which is going to be really cool. Uh, and then we'll go from there. Go from there. Yeah, the, the plan is I'd like to have one every month if possible, uh, but we'll we'll have them as frequently as I can find bottles and Steve has time and we have people that are interested. So, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Wes. Let's hear for Wes. Great job, as always. He's brought it. Thanks, guys. He's brought it. Uh, congratulations to uh, was it Eric and, and uh, Fred, our new champions. Uh, Mike's got the congratulations. Uh, yeah, congrats. Or longest. Okay. <laughs> and uh, we'll continue to, to watch that and have some fun with it. So appreciate that. Uh, we'll say goodbye for now. I'm going to turn off the recorder, and uh, but we'll continue to talk. I'll hang out for a bit. So see you guys. See Bye. ya.